Sorry guys, um, what happened? I don't know, I think I ran out of space or something. So hopefully, I'm gonna clean out my phone, so I just want one straight video. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, once you put the information down on my IEP, it's law. So the school, principal, teachers, they have to go by what's in the IEP. And if they don't, then you're gonna have to challenge it, okay? So whatever you have in your IEP, they have to, um, <laughs> They have to follow. So, um, for 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 example, uh, with my son's IEP, because my son wore pull-ups, I would tell them in the IEP that when my son has to be changed or go to the bathroom, that I want at least two people there. At first, I said I don't want any men changing or dealing with my child and i come to find out is a lot of men that work with special needs children that are teachers and they're not bad people but at the same time you just don't know so um i just i really reiterated that i didn't want any men changing my son's diaper but if we, if i came to a school where there's all men i don't have a choice so what i did was request that there's more than one person so there's a witness there so there's always two people there you know making each other accountable for each other so those are the type of things you can put in the IEP and that was just one thing that I put in there um, and I also wanted to tell you when in Illinois when I first found, found out my son had issues we signed up for early intervention program and also horizons is a therapy group and they were really great really really great um, to deal with, work with, they really work with my son. And also I use Sheck and Cyrus for orthotics. My son wears those as well. We can get into that more later. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about in regards to that. Uh, I wanted to talk about some don'ts when dealing with special needs, um, families, kids, things like that. It's just some don'ts that I, experiences that I went through that I didn't like. And I think that if I enlighten some people, they won't do it. Okay, don't. Don't come up to a special needs parent or child and tell them about your horror stories with your special needs parent or child, okay? Um, because sometimes we're not ready for it and sometimes it's information we're not asking for. Example, I had a lady come up to me she said that she admired that I took care of my son and she loved the way we interact and that, you know, she encouraged me and that, you know, and I really appreciate it. And then she said, well, I had a son, he has special needs, but I eventually had to give him up after a certain age because he came, he, he was too strong. I couldn't handle him. <sighs> what? Why would you tell me that? You know, like my, I don't want to hear that. I want to, I don't want to give my son up for any reason. And just to hear that, it just should you know put me in another place and I wasn't I, I just didn't feel good for the rest of the day I thought about it all, a lot and it just it worried me so just be careful with the information you share with special needs parents first get to know them get a report now if they the parent asks you well what happened to your son then you you know you probably would tell them but just to swing some information on a parent like that Mm -mm. You got to ease that in. You can't. We, we go through enough. Some caregivers suffer from depression, loneliness, uh, guilt. Um, I mean, a lot of things. And they definitely don't need anybody coming and telling them, oh, you know, I couldn't take care of my son. So he's, you know, he's an institution. You know, I, uh -uh, I don't want that from my son. I'm going to be and do as long as I can. Okay. <laughs> so don't. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Also, adults, I'm only talking to adults, I'm not talking to kids. Adults, don't stare at special needs children or their families. Why are you staring? It's rude. If you're interested and you you never seen anything like that or whatever the situation is, the best thing for you to do is go up to the families and say, Hi, I'm so and so and I was looking at and I was seeing you and I you know I was interested in your son's diagnosis. You know, go like that. Don't just be staring. I mean, kids, they're going to stare. They're interested. They don't know what's going on. And it's okay. Kids can stare. But, uh, no, no, no. Adults, don't do that. Okay. I'm going to try to speed it up because time is ticking, baby. Um. Hold on. Hey. 
My mouth is kind of parched. Uh, forgive me. <laughs> A little water there. Okay, before my phone dies. Um, also, if you're asking about a child, please do not say, what's wrong with your child? Don't do that. Don't say what's wrong with your child. We don't think anything is wrong with our child. Unfortunately, unforeseen occurrence, doctors or hospital uh, negligence or genetics have caused our children to be different. For you to say something's wrong with our child is really hurtful and is not a good feeling. So try to use different words. What's your son's diagnosis? Or what happened? Or, you know, I would like to know more. Very simple. Don't say <laughs> what's wrong with your child. There's nothing wrong with our children. Okay. I also want to talk about how Georgia doesn't have accommodations for caregivers to where they can also get paid for taking care of their special need adult children. A lot of states have it. Georgia doesn't. I advise you to write your councilman. I have. I'm still waiting for a response. Um, I think that it, it, you know, for parents who don't trust like I don't, I think it's good for them. And I think that, you know, most of the children at 18, they're going off to college. They're getting jobs. They're moving out. Well, not all of them. Um, but for us, a lot of them are going to be with us until we die. And I feel like us being grown, we should be able to take care of our children and also take care of ourselves. And I think that um, paying caregivers that are related to the patient would definitely help. And other states do. Why not Georgia? Why not? We're not trying to get rich off of We're just trying to function. So I just wanted to know what you guys thought about that. And also, I got an idea mm -hmm. from Instagram. Oh. My idea from Instagram was to fill up purses with toiletries and, and things that a person that lives on the street might need. Little snacks, little plastic forks and napkins and, and tampons and Roman noodles and water, perfume. You know, stuff that a woman can use. Fill up your purse. Go to your nearest area where they have a lot of homelessness and just hand them a bag and keep it moving. And it, on Instagram, they did a lot more. You know, they had like a 5, 6, 10, 15, 20, I don't know, bags filled up. Me, I can only do so much. So I said, I'm going to fill this up to capacity and I'm going to take my son and we're going to find, you know, look for somebody. I see him sometimes so I know kind of what areas to go into. And just, you know, share the love. Show them that you love them. Me, you know, I'm one of your witnesses, so I'm probably going to put some literature in here Bible or something, the word of God and remind them that homelessness will be a, a thing in the past when it comes to God's kingdom. Soon there will be no such thing as homelessness. But until then, I want to do my part. So, I thought that was a great idea to do. Um, da -da 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 -da. I also want to say um, that I'm very sad that the passing of John Witherspoon, he was iconic, he was funny, um, he's been around for a long time, and well, I remember him from House Party, the nosy neighbor, funny, and, uh, so he will be missed, he's resting now, and, um, hopefully in the future we'll be able to see him again. I can't see why a person like him uh, would die and never be heard or seen up again. You know, God is not that type of God, you know. And people like him remind me that we will see our dead loved ones again. So my prayers go out to the family. He seemed like a family man, beautiful wife, beautiful boy. So he will be missed. He was an asset to not just the entertainment community, but just the community period. So, John, we'll see you soon. Um... I wanted to tell you guys one of my favorite movies. One of my favorite movies is Crooklyn. Um, I really like that movie from Spike Lee. And Spike Lee inspired me a lot coming up. Um, he inspired me to want to be direct and all other stuff. I didn't. I haven't done it, but he was an inspiration. Um, one of the move. One of the reasons why that was my favorite movie was because the dynamic of the movie, the family dynamic. He showed a black family together. Growing up around my time, we didn't see a lot of movies with families together with the father there. They were always portrayed in a negative way. Single families, jail, drugs, pimps, all that. So that's one thing. One of the reasons why I admire this movie so much is because the fi family dynamic. 
dynamic. They went through what they had to go through, but they stuck together. Also, I relate to the movie even more now that I'm older because in the movie, the young lady, well, the family, the mother dies of cancer. So, wow, it came full circle for me. And um, it's just what it is, you know. Um, my phone is about to die. Let me see if I can <laughs> finish this without it dying on me. I surely do hate it. <laughs> okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about was what inspires me. And one of the things that inspire me nowadays, because there's so much going on, when people, non-blacks or non-minority people stand up against racism, um, because it's more powerful when they stand up than we do because they're saying that even though they're not affected by this and they can go on with their merry lives without thinking of it twice they're still affected by it they don't like it and they want it to stop so that that's in, when i see that it inspires me and encourages me it makes me feel better and it makes me um you know know that there's good people in this world and mankind still has a good heart so those are one one of the things that inspires me Okay, I'm going to wrap it up. This has been a very interesting day. I'm determined to finish this though, okay? It says I got 11 minutes left. I'm not going to do the whole 11 minutes. It's two parts. Uh, please, I hope you're watching this part, okay? It's two parts. Next time, it's going to be one long video, I promise you. But this time, it's going to be two parts, okay? So if you watch one, you better be watching this one too. <laughs> so anyway, next week, God willing... Uh, we will be speaking on lawyers and what we, you know, what to look for, um, the options you have and the experience that I actually went through in regards to a lawyer. So thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys so much. Please, please, please. If you like it, like it, um, share it. And if you like my content and you want to see more, then subscribe all you gotta do is hit the subscribe button okay i'm gonna take off my glasses even though i'm looking rough and i'm tired hi guys this is tip thank you so much for watching listening me and demarco really appreciate it hope to see you soon questions comments concerns leave a comment and um follow me on instagram too look for me in paradise that's my instagram and um, love you guys so much. I appreciate your support. Have a wonderful rest of the week.